Today on building the axis set, we're installing some energy suspension bushings with greasable zerk fittings. So this will be my third energy suspension bushing kit install. I've uh, not done one on a Miata yet. This is my first Miata I've ever had. It's Well, it's not a Miata anymore, but I've been happy with the energy suspension bushings. So I decided to stick with those. I went with the black ones because I just feel that, you know, doing the red, unless you have a red accent color on the car or something like that, doing the reds, like putting stickers on the, on the side of the car, you, you think it makes you look faster, but it, it's not the truth. So I went with the black. It will go nice with my uh, freshly powder, sandblasted, epoxy primered, and powder coated in King Sport gray control arms, also the subframe is powder coated in King Sport Gray, the knuckles, and the lower control arms. I'm going to also be using this color on the frame of the car. Uh, everything turned out really, really nice. Uh, these parts have a great finish. I did some. I have a powder coater doing some of the others. Been real happy with the, with the color. I think it's going to look pretty awesome on the car. So as I install these energy suspension bushings, I also will be doing the Zerk fitting modification. I personally have never had the energy suspension bushings squeak on me as long as you use plenty of their pre-lube. This is what they supply you with in the master kit. It generally is not enough to liberally grease all the bushings. I recommend getting another tub off uh, Amazon or wherever you want to, usually wherever you buy the bushings. But it's about 15 bucks, I think, for an extra tub, and it's quite a bit bigger than what they supply you with of the pre-lube. So... <clears throat> excuse me, definitely uh, invest in another tub as you really want to soak these things. Also, plenty of nitrile gloves because this stuff is nasty. Uh, it will not come off your hands. Um, I mean, eventually it will. It's just, it's just not pleasant to have on your hands. You will get it on there and you'll see what I mean when you do. So I haven't had any issues with squeaking in the uh, ES bushings, but my cars are never driven in the rain and see very, very mild use. Um, at least my cars that I put the energy suspension bushings on. However, I figured on this, I'm kind of going all out, if you will, on this build. I want to make sure this is everything is done as, as good as I reasonably can afford to and as reasonably as I can make it happen on the car. So the Zerk fittings is a little bit more time, but definitely worth it. Basically, the idea of the Zerk fittings is... The nice part about the ES bushings, they are in two pieces, so one on each side of the hole in the control arms. It is inserted through each side. However, when they are together, there is a gap. This Zerk fitting here, and it is just a quarter uh, inch Zerk fitting, I think it's a 28 pitch, will basically be drilled into the control arm and inserted in a hole through the middle of the two bushings. Now, inside the bushing sits a sleeve. This metal sleeve is what most people think causes the squeaking when the lube runs dry on the basically the contact point between this metal sleeve and the inside of the bushing. If you see here, there's notches throughout the bushing. Um, those basically can collect and hold the grease in there to help lube it up because these are supposedly, um, people say, moving inside the hole in the control arm. And so that, that rotation is really important to the proper performance of these bushings. So anyways, I'm going to basically show the full bushing install in the rear of the car since I have that uh, completely disassembled, all prepped, all powder coated and ready to go back together. So let's get to it. Okay, so now for getting to the part where we actually drill and tap for the Zerk fitting. Uh, I have a quarter by 28 pitch Zerk fitting. Need a center punch, hammer, uh, pliers or a socket. Need a quarter inch tap. And also in my cordless drill, a 732nd drill bit. It's a good idea just to get some uh, cutting oil on the drill bit and on the uh, tap before you start. First step basically is you want to locate where you want to put your Zerk fitting. Uh, this particular case, this is where the lower rear control arm will connect to the knuckle. I plan on when I do service the Zerks in the winter time, um, I'm going to be removing the tires and doing a lot of work. So I'm going to insert these Zerk fittings here and here. 
for example, on this one. So just kind of make sure before you do it that you know that you are going to have clearance uh, where you are inserting the Zerk fittings. Really, um, there's not much issue on the outer control arms, on the inner uh, part of the control arms. There is some issues with the subframes that you need to pay attention to. At the end of the video, I will show you where I um, inserted all my Zerk fittings so you can kind of see um, the best places, well, in my opinion, the best places to insert them. So first thing is, we are going to take our center punch and make a nick, if you will, in the control arm uh, for starting our drill bit. Then we will be drilling the hole, then tapping the hole, then inserting the Zerk fitting. So now once your Zerk fitting is inserted, it should look something like this. You will see a protrusion in the hole. That is where you will cut the slot in the energy suspension bushing. And that will uh, basically allow it to the grease to penetrate all the way through the bushing and make contact with that inner sleeve. So that's what it should look like when you are done drilling, tapping, and inserting your Zerk fitting. The time that we are going to um, work on our bushings, we want to, between these two parts, these two bushings, excuse me, we want to get our drill bit to drill through. In some cases, and in this one, for instance, you'll find that the energy sus suspension bushings sit about that far apart in the hole. Um, the Zerk fitting is centered on this seam here. So in this case, drilling really did no good, uh, or was pointless, I should say. Now, what I recommend is before you tap the hole after you drill your initial uh, hole for the Zerk fitting, I would insert the bushings in both ends and then take that same size drill bit, hold the bushings in the control arm, and drill a hole through them. That makes it easiest to hold them and keep them together. Then you can remove them, tap your hole, clean the um, excess metal out of the hole, out of the bushing, and then insert your Zerk fitting, then you can grease and insert your bushings. So uh, that's already been done here on this one. Now I'm going to start the process of greasing the bushings and inserting them into the controller. A completed bushing install in this control arm. Now I hear a lot of people nervous, scared, there's always the use enough grease, use enough grease, how do I know when I got enough grease? Um, the rule of thumb that I have used is I always get enough grease in there that then when I'm done I see it ooze out between the control arm and the bushing here. When I see it ooze out here, oozing out here, and oozing out there, I know that I had basically as much grease as I could packed into that uh, bushing. So that's what I have always used for it, uh, for a uh, rule as far as when I'm packing grease. I make sure to put plenty on that I know some will ooze out. It's not that expensive to buy, and uh, it's good insurance to know that you have enough in there. Okay, so rear upper control arm. There's a lot of discussion about this online, as there's pretty tight clearances in there. Um, on the bottom side of the control arm, some guys are tapping enlarging this hole here and tapping it through there. Um, I don't like that because no matter how big I get that, it's a little iffy if the grease 
gun fitting is going to get in there. Also, looking at the suspension, there's a possibility it may contact. On the top, there is this hole here, which could be gone through. However, I really don't, the amount that hole would have to be enlarged is a little iffy. So for now, uh, I'm choosing to not put the Zerk fittings in the upper rear control arms. I can later if I want to, that's always a possibility. Um, the nice thing is um, these two-piece bushings, in my opinion, are pretty, some guys say they're hard to remove. I don't, don't see how they're having a problem. I never have, but they can be a little difficult to remove. So, uh, or they, they aren't very difficult to remove and easily serviceable in removing the upper control arm, um, as well as on the knuckle here. I'm not going to tap that one as well. I just really don't want to drill into the cast iron knuckle. So, um, it's easily serviceable. This should not affect the alignment at all as there's no adjustment points on the upper control arm. So I'm just going to live with them for now. And if they do squeak, uh, I can always pull them apart later and, um, apply the Zerk fittings and hopefully a correct spot once I get my suspension all set up and everything um, corner balanced and know what the actual height and clearance values I'm gonna have there are. Here we are, control arm done. As you can see, this is the lower rear control arm. The uh, outer part of the control arm, which connects to the knuckle, these are fittings were placed here. Probably will have to remove the wheel to get to that knuckle, but I consider that not a big deal. On the underside of the control arm, this one I inserted through the hole, drilled it out a little bit, the hole in the casting there. Not real happy with that, so I ended up moving the second one to here. I will be putting the remaining ones in this position as well. Uh, bushings are all installed, greased very well. Uh, one thing I'd like to show you guys that I was commenting on earlier in regards to the amount of grease, that is after one side, upper and lower control arm. I have literally almost no grease left, just enough to maybe do one more bushing. So I definitely probably use way too much of this, if that's even possible, but um, you definitely need the extra jar. I might even need to order another one of these because I slather this stuff on. Maybe that's why I have never had them squeak before, but um, make sure you have plenty of grease, use plenty of grease, make sure when you push them together, everything oozes out. I just think that's a little bit of confidence um, that you've got grease everywhere you could when it oozes out the sides. So that's it. I just want to give you guys a quick uh, show on how to insert the Zerk fittings. Once again, I am not a professional mechanic. By no means am I doing anything correctly. Uh, just trying to show you guys the process I'm using and how I'm doing it. If you have any comments or uh, want to tell me how crappy of a job I'm doing, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Thanks, guys. Until next time, see you then.